Lee's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. <laughs> You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half-hour's entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia. In America, everybody has got a plenty of time to enjoy himself. Especially the kids. All the day long, they skate and they run and they swim and they throw the baseball, chase each other in the streets and over the fences. Mamma mia, I think if I was born in America, I would have been too tired to grow up. <laughs> and they got such a wonderful, such a wonderful schools for these kids. First is a kindergarten where you study with the little blocks. Then is a grammar school where you study the grammar. Then you study some more in a high school. And if you're lucky enough, you go to college where you stop studying and begin to play football. <laughs> the reason I'm writing to you all this about American kids is because I'm a belonger to what they call Big Brothers of America. And I'm a big brother to little Sandy. He's a newsy boy. And I tell you, Mamma Mia, it would make you, your bigger heart to feel good to see what a change has been in this little boy. All I'm going to give him is one thing, and that's a very cheap. In fact, it's a cost of nothing. Love. All little children should have that. Oh, it's making me feel very proud of the way Sandy is a look up to me. Only yesterday, I was walking into my night school class, and as Sandy was to say, Boy, Mr. Bosco, I sure hustled papers today. Hustled? What's that? Oh, it's just slang. Lots of us kids use slang. Well, it's like, like rack them up. Rack em up. What's that, that new song, Rag em up? <laughs> oh, no. You see, in pool room... Sandy, you don't go to the pool room no more, do you? Oh, no, Mr. Bass. Go on, if I cut it out. You want me to swear? Sandy, is it not the nice little boys who should have swear? I would have stopped you a long time ago if you wasn't have told me pool room is where the people go swimming. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry anymore, Mr. Bosco. I don't lie to you, and I don't do any of the things I used to. But... But the what? Mr. Basco, you got to help me some more. There's something i got to get off my chest. Sure, what do you got, a mustard plaster? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> this is something I did that was very wrong. Sandy. But it was a long time ago. Oh, a long time ago. Sandy, I'm going to tell you before. What's the past is a forgot. And like Uncle Pietro has always said, what's a here is a here, what's a coming is a going to be, and what's a pass is a not going to happen. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Huh? What do you mean by that? I don't know. <laughs> you see, Uncle Pietro has only said the smart things, and he's never explained them. <laughs> but this is something... I'm going to want to hear. Remember what I'm first to tell you, Sandy? Is it never too late to, to start the fresh? That's what's happening to you. Is it turn out to good? Real good. Fine. Well, here's my night school, Sandy. I'm going to see you tomorrow. Goodbye, little brother. Goodbye, big brother. That's all right. Quiet class, please. That's fine. Now, I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Present. Mr. Harwood? Present. Mr. Olson? Present. Mr. Schultz? I'll tell him when he comes in. <laughs> oh, thank you, fellow boobers. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, stop acting silly. Just say present. Ah, who knows if I'm present? Does anybody really know anything? Life is just a dream. And what seems real one minute is a shadow the next minute. 
The most real thing is life. If you look at it Mr. closely... Mr. Schultz, how long do you intend to keep up that speech? Until the bell rings. I didn't do my homework. <laughs> Thank you, fellow sufferers. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, you may stop bowing and take your seat. Now, class, today we are taking up the... Mr. Horowitz, what are you whispering to Mr. Basco? Oh, um, I was just telling him that I read there was going to be a meeting of the Big Brothers in the school Thursday, and that Luigi was going to win a silver pin from the Big Brothers of America. Is that true, Mr. Basco? Oh, yeah, I saw the bulletin board, too. Congratulations, Louise. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Basco. Well, thank you, thank you. Who has the biggest surprises for me, too? Think of it. Luigi was voted the best big brother in the neighborhood. Oh. Luigi? Yes, sir. Uh, be a big brother and lend me $10. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Basco, we're all very proud of you. How's little Sandy coming along? Oh, he's the fine of Miss Spalding. I'm going to go with him on a long walk so we go to the museums and the libraries. And sometimes it was just a walk in a park and a feed the pigeons. Himmel, what a way to waste a childhood. <laughs> Schultz, you know that's not true. Your little Sandy was on the wrong road until Luigi made friends with him. Now he's becoming a genuine gentleman. <laughs> ah, smile, everybody. I was only joking. Uh, Luigi, don't Pasquale complain that you are spending too much time with the boy and not enough time with Rosa? Well, he's not too happy, Schultz. Don't he like you should be a big brother? No. He wants I should be a little husband. Luigi, <laughs> <laughs> don't you listen to Pasquale. If you enjoy being a big brother, then you, you stick to it. Yeah, yeah, oh, isn't that right? Because I got it three children, Luigi, and believe me, the greater satisfaction a man can have, the biggest pleasure you can ever enjoy is to come home at night after a hard day's work, open up the door, and find the little monsters fast asleep. <laughs> oh, Mr. Schultz, be serious. This big brother idea is wonderful. Yes. Many a young boy needs a mature friendship, some affection and guidance. And furthermore, you never know, but one kind word or one good deed from an older man might change a little boy's entire life. That's the truth. Ah, of course, of course. You know, I remember the first day I came to America. It was bitter winter. I was cold and hungry and alone. I walked in the streets with empty pockets. I thought I didn't have a friend in the world. And then, as I crossed the street to get over to the other sidewalk, a cop touched me gently on the shoulder. He looked at me, and then he reached into his pocket. And he said, give you money to eat? No, he gave me a ticket for jaywalk. <laughs> my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Hey, Pasquale, guess you what? I'm a getting a prize for being the best big brother in the neighborhood. Well, well, well. Look who's getting a prize. My own little banana nose. <laughs> How much money? It's no money, Pasquale. I'm a getting a pin. What the for? To hold up your pants? <laughs> Find a reward after wasting so much time with that Sandy, that the jovial delinquent. <laughs> no, but Pasquale, is it not the so much of the pin? Is a reward enough for, for me? How Sandy is a change? What a change, Luigi? Let me tell you something. Once a crook, always a crook. That's a nature. I don't have to tell you. Everybody knows a, a camel is a never change its stripes. <laughs> <laughs> and are you wrong? I'm always to say, is it never too late to start afresh? Sandy's a good boy. Ouch, he used to talk. Here, this letter came to you this morning. I think it's important. Oh. How you know it's important? Because I read it. <laughs> Pasquale, did you open up this letter? Who, me? Open up your mail, Luigi. Don't be insulted. Well, then who's opening it up? The United States government. You see, tomorrow is March 15th, and the income tax of people, they get no worried, maybe they won't collect enough taxes the regular way. So every March 14th, they have what they call grab bag day. <laughs> Open up all the letters and take out of whatever they find. <laughs> no, but, well, stop, stop. Well, let me read this letter. Uh, Mr. Luigi Basco, 21 and not the Hollister Street, the dear sir. 
A book you borrowed, Autobiography of Benjamin Franklin, has been overdue since August 23rd, 1949. You are notified that two weeks is the customary period for lending the books. After that, the cost and the fines are, are accruing. Please return the book immediately, public library. Oh, that's bad, Luigi, bad. <laughs> Looks like I'm going to have to visit this big brother in the bigger house. <laughs> no, but Pasquale, I'm, I'm not mean anything wrong. I'm a just a forgot about the book. Forgot? How come? Oh, I just remember. I was looking for it a long time ago. It was a missing. I didn't find it, and it slipped in my mind. Slipped to your mind, eh? Well, it didn't slip of theirs. Luigi, your case is now in the hands of the FBI. <laughs> the FBI? Yes, a federal book investigator. <laughs> Luigi, you in the worst the trouble of your life. You know what they call a fellow who's getting into trouble with a public library? What? A bookie. <laughs> now, I'm going to want to scare you, but I wouldn't have been surprised if instead of an LB for Luigi Bosco, police is going to change your initials to LP for Leavenworth the Penitentiary. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, that's the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And to Sandy, just think what's happened to Sandy and the other bigger brothers when they find out. Luigi... It's going to be a catastrophe. <laughs> no, no. No, Pasquale. Pasquale, you mustn't. You mustn't tell us, Sandy. He's a trusting me so much. It, it would... You would... He would... Oh, stop a chopping a wood. <laughs> Luigi, only a miracle can save you from disgrace or any grace. Well, what, what a miracle? What a miracle? I'm a thinking. Don't you smell smoke? <laughs> Luigi, when you got your library card, I was assigned a few character. That's uh -huh. to prove you had one. Yeah. Well, if I go to the library as a citizen and a big shot from the neighborhood, I could have redeemed your face by giving them money. This they keep as a hostage and that entitles you to use your lawful name and library card again. Pasquale, you would have done this for me? Well, it's a big sacrifice for Luigi, but for you, I'd do it. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, you must the wonderful man in the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to do you a little favor. Maybe you're going to do me a little favor. Why, sure, Pasquale, what's the favor? Marry my daughter, Rosa. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, ain't you got any other favor? All right, don't marry Rosa. Good. Let her marry you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yes. Listen to you, pup squeak. Beggars can be choosers. I'll give you three hours before I turn you in. It's a nine o'clock an hour. I want your decision by 12 o'clock a high. <laughs> But, but, Pasquale... But to me, no buts. The immigrant who's to take advantage of a public library is the lowest thing there is. A bookworm. Goodbye. <laughs> Mamma mia, the trouble I'm in. I'm worse off than all the countries in the whole world. They worried about the atom bomb, the ex bomb, the hydrogen bomb. But I'm going to get the biggest bomb of all the Rosa bombs. Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a little idea you'll find useful when you're busy working around your home or at your job. Occasionally, during the day, slip a stick of delicious Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum into your mouth. Go right along working and chewing at the same time. You'll find that the smooth, pleasant chewing relieves the monotony, helps keep you from getting restless or tense. As a result, you naturally feel better and work better. Always keep a package of refreshing Wrigley Spearmint gum handy so that you can chew and enjoy a stick whenever you want. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, is a terrible trouble for me. Today I'm supposed to get the beautiful pin from the Big Brothers of America. But instead of Pasquale, he's going to send me to jail. He's to say today is the last day to make up on my mind. Either up the river or Rosa. <laughs> Up the river, Mamma Mia. Up the river is a slang expression means I'm in a jail. 
But if I marry Rose, it's another slang expression that means I'm into the soup. <laughs> what am I going to do? If a Sunday finds out, is it going to break my heart? So I'm a thought, I'm a thought, maybe I go find the book. First, the thing I'm going to do is I go to Schultz's the Delicatessen. Maybe that's where I left it. Another pound of potato salad, Mr. Schultz. Uh, certainly, certainly. Yeah. Uh, Schultz, uh, uh, Schultz, I'm going to like the butter. Oh, Luigi, my fellow boob. Ah, uh, you know, when you first came in, I didn't give a good look. I thought you were just a crummy customer. <laughs> Schultz, I'm, I'm, I'm in a terrible trouble. What? Uh, pardon me, Mr. Schultz. You were in the middle of my potato salad. No, please, Mrs. Pastor, like this is a friend of mine. And don't say I was in the middle of your potato salad. <laughs> what, my store should be condemned by the health department? <laughs> what is it, Luigi? Well, oh, Schultz, Schultz, have you seen a book of mine here? Autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. What's the name again? The Autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> oh, that shows you how stupid I am, Luigi. I didn't even know they had autos in Franklin's day. <laughs> No, Schultz, Schultz, I'm in a terrible trouble with the library. What's the matter, Luigi? Did you try to take out the librarian instead of a book? <laughs> no, Schultz. Pasquale says the library is sending me a letter because the police are cracking it down on the bookies. So I'm going to have to get a new stationery because my name is going to be Luigi Leavenworth. <laughs> Who's that scheming Pasquale as he got you for shimmered? <laughs> Mr. Schultz, if you are going to continue talking, I shall have to take my business elsewhere. But go, go no, Schultz, Mr. Schultz, please. I'm going to want you should lose a customer. I'm going to go. Excuse the lady. I'm sure Schultz is a mean no hammer when he's a step into your parade salad there. <laughs> Goodbye, Schultz. Goodbye, Luigi. And don't worry. Smile. Be like me. Happy. Always laughing. <laughs> <laughs> My rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> You know where he is? Got no idea. Hey, come here a minute. I want to talk to you. Sure. You like Luigi, don't you? I'll say. He's my big brother, you know. Yeah. He's like you so much as I don't got a time for nobody else. <laughs> big brother, huh? Sandy, you old enough to know children is a got to come from the same mama and a papa. Don't you know that? Yeah. That's a simple chemistry. <laughs> Brothers are coming from papas, the sisters are coming from mamas. <laughs> now look, kid, uh, Luigi is a total stranger to you. Only reason he hangs around you, he hopes you're going to sell him a newspaper at a half price. <laughs> oh, no. I always want to give him a paper for free, but he always pays for it. There, that's a prove he don't love you. He just pities you. What? He knows how much you need the money. One's got nothing to do with the other. You're a big, fat liar. That's a fine way to talk to your grown-ups, you little gangster. You got no right to say that. You've been swiping the things ever since you could have reached the shelves in the five or the ten. <laughs> Mr. Basco said it's never too late to start fresh. You're just mad because he won't marry your daughter, and everybody knows it. Listen, you got to swipe. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't want him for a son-in-law. He's a crook like you. He's no crook. No? Just to go to the public library and see if he didn't steal out of Benjamin Franklin's uh, autopsy. Uh, <laughs> something like that. Benjamin Franklin? Sure. And don't think I ain't going to let the big brothers know all about you two. I'll fix him good. You won't fix anybody. You won't hurt Luigi. Hey, where you running? I won't let you. Uh, uh, I think I heard the kid's feelings. Well, he heard of mine with that Rosa talk. But I heard of him with that newspaper talk. But he called me a big fat liar. <laughs> but I told him, there's no doubts about it, I'm a rat. <laughs> Luigi, 
You got a few hours left. The sooner you got to go get your pin. Yeah, I know, Pasquale. Luigi, believe me, I'm doing everything what's the best for you. Rosie's going to make you a wonderful wife. She's a real fine girl. When you take a rose, it's my loss and you gain. <laughs> You're so right, Pasquale. When I take a rose, it's my loss and she's going to gain. <laughs> oh, Luigi. Look on me. All right, I'm looking. Study the character in my face. You think I'm a bitter, mean old man? You think I'm not got no feelings for you? You think I'm made of rock and steel and I would do anything just to get rid of my daughter? That's what do you think, huh? No, Pasquale. Well, you're wrong. I would. <laughs> Luigi, face the facts. I didn't bring you to America just for a boat ride. And I didn't bring you here so you should win a big sister prize. But, uh, Pasquale, I... I was... Don't keep me waiting. Say you marry Rosa and I keep my mouth shut with a sandy, you get your pin. Say no, and the police will crack down on you in ten minutes. All right, Pasquale, I'm Mary Rosa. <laughs> good, good. I'm going to call her Rosa now to hear the good news. Rosa! 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 Yes, my little buttercup. I, I mean, the buttercup. <laughs> Rosa, say hello to Luigi. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> Luigi. Hello, Rosa. <laughs> See, Luigi, how intelligent the Rosa's to carry on a conversation. Now, why don't you forget about being a big brother to a little ten-year-old dumbbell when you can marry Rosa and have a dozen of your own? <laughs> Papa, did you tell Luigi Sandy was here looking for him? Rosa, go back in the store. What? The... Hey, Rosa, when was he here? About ten minutes ago. Rosa. You'll be quiet, Pasquale. You said Rosa carries very intelligent conversation. I'm wondering why he's not here. What's happening to him, Rosa? Well, Papa said you stole Benjamin Franklin out of the library, so Sandy ran away. Oh, Pasquale, you didn't. He did? Oh, shut up your face! <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia, now, now everything is lost. Six months I tried to with Sandy and Pasquale, you tore down everything. I wait for Luigi. No, it's no use. I'm run to the library and tell everything. I'm run to tell everything. <laughs> Ahead of this library? Yes, what can I do? I'm gonna give up. What? I'm gonna give myself up. I'm gonna admit everything. I'm a bookie. You're a what? I'm a bookie. Well, that hardly affects me. I've never bet on a horse in my life. No, please, there's another horse. There's a Benjamin Franklin. Oh, I see. Now, now, suppose you relax and tell me what it's all about. Well, uh, it's about the Benjamin Franklin and how he lived when he was a little boy. He used to. Uh, I mean, are you looking for or returning a book? No, I'm going to receive a letter from you because I'm going to return a book. Believe me, I'm not mean it wrong. A library is a wonderful thing. Oh, well, what's your name? Luigi Basco, 21 and the Holster Street, Chicago, Fort Illinois. Well, I'll just check through the file. All right. Uh, uh, Luigi Basco, Luigi Basco, Luigi Basco. You got so many Luigi Bascos? <laughs> no. Oh, oh here. Uh -huh. oh, yes, you took out a book, the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin on August 23rd, 1949. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to never return it, so I'm going to give myself up. Oh, wait a minute. What's this? Huh? Why, that book was returned today. You mean it's to come home by itself? <laughs> Who did it this? Well, that's odd. Uh, here, here's a note on the card. Oh. Someone paid up all the fines with a request that their name not be mentioned. Somebody. No mention. Could it be? Pasquale? Well, anyway, the book is here and the fine was paid, so whatever was worrying you before needn't any more. Oh, Mamma mia. That's the minute Pasquale is not going to tell the bigger brothers, and I'm going to get that to pin. I'm going to hurry up. I'm late for the meeting. What? Oh, nothing, nothing. Thank you, Mr. Library. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, oh Mr. Basco, huh? if you didn't finish that Franklin book, you may take it out again. No, thanks. Franklin is run away once this year. I think you better watch him a little bit. <laughs> Big 
Brothers of America, Chicago chapter number 42, take pleasure in awarding this pin to Mr. Luigi Bach. Thank you. And with it, another one to Sandy Michael for his excellent advancement. Thank you. Oh, some are beautiful of pins, huh, Sandy? Sure. Boy, it was a lucky day for me when I met you, Mr. Basco. I was going from bad to worse. Sandy, sometimes you think you, you was a bad and you could never change it. That's not the truth. Nobody's a born a perfect. Let me tell you something about the me that's happening right now. Mr. Basco, before you tell me something, I want to tell you something. What? Remember I told you I wanted to get something off my chest? Sure. <laughs> and I thought it was a mustard of plaster. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Mr. Basco, it was about your book. The library book. Mine? Uh-huh. I stole it out of your store when you first got it. You told me all about the big brothers. I just listened. I thought it was a lot of bunk. When I was so used to taking something, I took your book. Then I never got the courage to tell you about it. Uh-huh. What was it you wanted to tell me, Mr. Basco? Nothing, Sandy, nothing. You know, for a little boy, you got a lot of courage. You know what you say. It's never too late to start fresh. You still like me, Mr. Basco? I like you. I'm a love you. Well, here's your house, Sandy. Good night. Good night, big brother. Good night, the little brother. Everything is a turn out to fine after all. Isn't that the wonderful thing? There's a big brothers where one helps out to the other. And maybe someday this idea is go around the world and everybody is a help for one another. Anyway, I was sitting in front of my store the next day, and sure enough, Pasquale is come to me and asking me to marry Rosa. So I said to Pasquale, you ask me a thousand times. How can you ask me again? And he said, Luigi, I'm using your own words. Is it never too late to start the fresh? <laughs> your loving son, Luigi Basco, Lily McGrath. <laughs> Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they'd like to remind you of the enjoyment you can give and receive by passing Wrigley's Spearmint Gum around to your family and your friends. Offering a person a stick of delicious Wrigley's Spearmint is a typical American gesture of friendliness. Folks enjoy its refreshing real mint flavor and the pleasant chewing. So always keep a few packages of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. Enjoy this good tasting treat often yourself and win a lot of thank yous by offering it to others. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mac Benoff. <laughs> J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conway as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Spalding, Joel Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluff. Friends of the Wrigley Company invite you to listen to their other program, The Gene Autry Show, every Saturday night over most of these same CBS stations. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>